Hey, good morning. How are you? Como tal le vo? Namaste. Welcome to Forex. Today, let me remind you that trading is not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. You stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hey, it is the 18th, Monday, the 18th of December, 2017. Pretty amazing, huh? Almost to the end. Hi, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist. You want to see my picture when I was a baby? Yeah, I grew up. <laughs> oh, no, now I'm banned in Beijing huh? again. I do these sessions Monday through Friday here at Forex Start Today. Thank you for being a client to Trader's Way. We appreciate you. We work hard for you. We care about you. We want you to succeed because we're altruistic. Also, if you succeed, you keep trading, you keep trading, brokers make money. So it's in our best interest for you to not just survive, but thrive. So uh, I am here to help and guide and share my experience of trading foreign exchange for almost 15 years, I guess. Yeah, 15 years. So uh, let's talk. Let's talk through our trades. Let's talk through our strategies. Let's talk through our strife and our struggles. I'm here for you, man. Cream says, don't try to make up all your profits and stuff. Yeah, uh, in the last two weeks, yeah. How was my weekend? Uh, my, my weekend was nice. Uh, I'm studying for a final exam tonight. So it should be fine. That should be fine. I, I think I'll actually uh, take it in the morning. It's I can take a distance. So I have a 24-hour window in which I need to take it. Cars unprepared, Ryan. Gee whiz. What kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, but yeah, so, anyways, uh, yeah, I think if I don't even take the final examination, I get an A minus, maybe a B plus if I don't even show up for the final, so I should do all right. I so, anyways, I don't know what to do. All right, so let's get going, let's talk through some trades. We'll start with the basics here. Oh, by the way, what's going on this week? Uh, next week's holidays. Forget next week. Next week's no good. The week after, we got to prepare um, for year end. So that, that could be interesting. That very often, you'll see some money, money come out of the market. Um, generally, it'll be the losing trades. Is that right, bro? Only on... Only on weekdays, huh? Is that right? Gee whiz, I have to yell at somebody then. Yeah, all right. Well, you guys got to tell me faster, I guess. Yeah, I didn't know that. Sorry. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. And then uh, so generally year-end, people take their losses first to offset the profits, and then they're going to take their profits in January so that they can defer their taxes. Eric, okay, I'll, I'll look into that, guys. Thank you. Ah. Let's see what you see. Okay, good. Uh, so that's that. This week, what do we got? Uh, BOJ, uh, that's important. What is that, Wednesday or Thursday? I don't even remember. Something like that, maybe BOJ is generally Thursday, um, so it could be Wednesday night. Um, we also have uh, U.S. GDP. Ryan says, how do we know where the losses are? Well, try to figure out what you would have done. Right? Let's say you were longing uh, yen pairs and they didn't go up. You know, I don't know. Yeah, do, how do you know? Well, you never know. You know, yeah, you never know anything. 
right? So I, I don't know, just the market may move, but maybe not necessarily in the way you would think. So I don't know, how about this? Going into the end of the year, I, I would use some hardcore technical analysis and uh, forget, you know, I wouldn't base everything on long-term fundamentals. I'd look at short-run technicals. Yeah, so I don't know, just, yeah. Uh, be short-sighted. I think it's cool to be short-sighted. Um, so that's that. I think that's all that's really on the calendar that matters. Right? Am I missing anything? I'm just, uh, I don't have a calendar in front of me, so I'm just, I think that's it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if we're getting GDP, because G, that would be in. Yeah, I mean, it would be a scalping up, too, I guess. Yeah, I'm just wondering if people are like, uh, uh, they want to go home, right? So remember, one of the most important things that people forget when trading the markets, and I suppose it's any market, is that you need people. And it's a very male-dominated industry, and men are stupid and we're lazy. So... We, we want to make some money and go home. That's it. We just want to go home. <laughs> That's it. Just, how do we get out of the office quick, right? So, yeah, so I'm wondering Christmas next year uh, or next week, you know, are people going to want to bail out of the office early, take Friday off at least maybe? So now they got their trades going in. So, like, they want to skip town right after GDP on, on Thursday, something like that. Uh, Mike wants to know, like, uh, the first session of next year. Uh, the best way to figure that out is find out when the New York Stock Exchange opens, Mike. If you don't have professional markets uh, uh, traders in the market, I, I wouldn't trade. That's always my rule of thumb. If the New York Stock Exchange is closed or even half days, forget it. The big boys aren't trading. Your technical analysis is going to be less reliable, and that's not a day where you want to really be trading seriously. Right, it's just additional risk, and since we're not big enough to move the market, I'd hate to like buy at a pivot and it doesn't do anything. So, um, so anyways, so we'll go through the technical analysis. Uh, we'll look for opportunities. I'm assuming you you did the swing, your swings last night and stuff, so you should be all fine with that. Uh, there's a lot of mud and there's a lot of opportunity out there, so let's just kind of go through it. Okay, there's my drawing tool, handy dandy pad to paper, my handy my handy dandy notepad. Uh, check this out. I got to get that fib out of there. It's confusing you, I think. But anyways, if you're a weekly swing trader, that was a buy opportunity right at the open. There were there were a few. Opportunities. Let's try to get out of this. Let's go four hour. There it is. Okay. So going back, going back in time, we identified this area. Do you remember doing this? We did this a long time ago. I think when we were up here. Okay. So. We may be at support, right? That's it. We might be at support. And if you're at support, maybe there's a buying opportunity. And the buying opportunity is probably here to here is what you would think, right? Isn't that what this whole thing is about? I think we had planned it from this, okay? That's just the basics. That's what you'd assume. If you're at support and you're ranging, you, you buy at the bottom, go to the top of the range. Top of the range is speed and the old resistance. So if you were to be, you know, the the uh, the, the pivot, the, the man who draws the pivots, 
right? If you drew perfect pivots, what would you want? You would say, well, how about M2 to here? M2 to R2, right, would be the perfect week, wouldn't it? Well, oh, snap, that's our support we drew two weeks ago. And that's the target that that support would presuppose. Is that interesting? It just sucks it's the British pound, right? Still technical analysis. I think it's neat how it all lines up. Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. And all the trades you do. And they were profitable. So I think that's neat. I think it's just really neat because we drew this back in here. Down to the support. And then if it's range bound, it's going to come back up. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Now, the very same trade is here. Do you guys remember drawing? Let's clear this up. You guys remember I drew with the blue lines, the, the support? I really kind of, I did that so it would really stand out. This is not typically what you draw support and resistance with. You guys remember? We were, I think it was the higher high one, two, three scenario. The hammock conversation and the conversation was you know we we're hoping that this would head up right and the stop was to be below the support right so I bought it uh, here and I bought it here Now, my threat, okay, my threat now is this area. That's where the bears live, right? So I could take my profit. Or I can lock in my break even. Cool. Nice. Your skin. Oh, yeah. Your skin and bones turn into something beautiful. All right. So, what do we have here? So, so, so. Uh, we're going to need some, uh, we need oil to go up, but check that out. It was a sell last week. It's a sell three weeks ago. That's just a sell. Okay. I don't know if it's going to, so you're going to need a trade plan. But the general trade plan is if it, if it rolls over, I'm just trying to get this in bed. There you go. If it rolls over, your target's here, huh? So you need to use now technical analysis on smaller time frames to analyze whether it's rolling over or not. Oscillators, moving averages, candlestick patterns, look for your dragon doji. Was it a dragon doji? A uh, dragonfly doji. Um, yeah. Never let, never let it go. Yeah, if you see a dragonfly doji right here at you know weekly and monthly resistance, then your target's going to be the green zone. Might as well play that cluster.
And you'll notice it's also just range bound. Home, home on the range. Yeah. Am I too happy for you guys? You're like, whoa, dude, tone it down. Well, I'll have you know that at approximately 3 o'clock in the morning, I was wiping up uh, bucketfuls of projectile vomit for my 11-year-old uh, daughter. Yeah. <laughs> nice, right? Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think it's just the time of year, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Just the season, I, I think. So anyways, we need some oil to move, right? So why don't we look at some oil? If USD CAD comes down, oil must go up. So let's kind of clear this out, go into a smaller time frame. This is the, uh, the break scenario, if it breaks then, right? And it's it didn't open for bulls or bears. That's where the bears would sell. Uh, I mean, at, at best, that's where bulls would buy. But it could be down in here. So if it's truly going to rally, then we need to plan it like this. Oops. If it's truly going to rally from here, it's going to need to ride the, the moving average into here. Okay, and then that gets us to here. Uh, it doesn't really help that much, does it? Because after that, I can't even guarantee, oops, I can't even guarantee, of course, anything, but I can't really guarantee that we would go any further. Because I don't have a decent base. Yeah, I just heard about that, Martin. So uh, I'll, I'll contact the server guys. Thank you for your patience, though. So you know, can't we don't have enough info really to go on. Okay. I mean, the, the only hope you could possibly say is, you know, we're on the daily 21, but that's not even clear. So, I don't know if I'd be betting on CAD. Now, I got knocked out of my CAD yen trade uh, Friday, today. Remember I locked in 100 pips? Well, you should kaput. So I got my stupid 100 pips. It's open for more, but what are you going to do? So that's out. So I don't really have cat exposure. And then I look at this, and it's like, it's not clear where it's going to go, is it? Look at this. We even have a stochastic kiss and all that kind of stuff. So I guess, you know, I'll cry my 100 pips into a glass of beer, right? <laughs> I only mean it in your pips. Yeah. Cry, cry me a river, right? And then how about this sucker? Uh, fib Wars. I look at that and say, get ready for the Fib Wars. And I think we talked about that. And that's what all this stuff to the left is. Right? So what? Well, if you want to be a bull, 
And I think we talked about this like Monday last week, Monday or Tuesday last week. Um, yeah, I kind of remember now because it went too low. Remember that? I was really bummed about it. It went too low. This area in here, the second tier, is the actual support in which you want to be buying. Okay, because this is supposed to be the low for gold right in here for the month of December. So now that we're climbing back up, you know, I don't know. I don't know where it goes. Maybe back to the central, back up, maybe up forever. So you want to talk about this fundamentally. As global macroeconomics increase, uh, real incomes can go up globally because people have jobs, people have secure jobs, they're investing, they're, the value of their assets are going up that kind of stuff and right now money is cheap to borrow globally so businesses can borrow and invest right so global GDP should be going up right so as I guess you could call it the wealth effect right as disposable income is increasing globally not just in the US but globally uh, it's a sh it's a shift in the the demand curve and all there, there's an increase for all assets right and gold perhaps could be one of those things maybe people buy gold i mean just for the fact that they have money and they want to buy it or just for the fact that uh, they can afford fancier dental work or they can afford more jewelry or they can afford more electronics right this isn't necessarily just vault gold but they can afford that too okay hey uh essence of uh central banks about cryptocurrencies um are any of you guys experts on mining Well, if you have anything for uh, me to read, uh, send it my way, if you will. Okay. All right. What am I looking for? Uh, what if I set up a uh, hundred machines mining bitcoins all day? So I don't, I don't know if I want to trade it, like I trade Forex. I mean, I got Forex. I'm already trading Forex, right? I don't need another currency because I have the U.S. dollar. I already have a worthless currency, right? Um, but to me, it seems interesting. Like, what if I just mine them? I mean, now it's just you know what are my input costs and what do i get for my output i mean you know why not that i get i don't care i mean it just might be fun right so I'd, i wouldn't tell anybody like hey man i put you know i put 10 grand into bitcoin i don't i don't want to tell anybody that <laughs> But I'm like, hey, put 10 grand into a bunch of computer hardware to mine Bitcoin, and if that don't work, at least I have $10,000 worth of computer hardware. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, Wayne and everything. I don't know, it's just it's funny to me. I don't know. Why not? It's just, what else am I going to do? Need a tax write off. How about that? Yeah. But, you know, 
Right. So the the worst case scenario is I I have ten thousand dollars worth of computer hardware. You know, that's all. Yeah, but I know people that know people, Kenny. Uh, I'm going to start my own nuclear power plant. So if I can get that cheap. Anyway, so if you know something about setting these up, um, email me, Wayne at epicspoocamp.com. Okay. All right. Uh, go. Then we got peso. Okay. Um, I'm wondering about shorting it soon uh, off of this because if if we don't head up here for a January one move, I might start. I might start buying Mexican peso. And we can look at it this way. It might be cheap. I might buy it and hold it for a year and see what happens. Okay. This is weekly. So by shorting this pair, you would be buying Mexican peso. So, yeah, maybe I'll do something like that. Okay. Check that out. Amazing, huh? So that might be another long-term play. Can you think of another long-term play? So for fun, let's just sell it now. I'll put it up here. Okay. What else could be a long-term play in commodities or exotics? What are, where, where else is the long-term carry if the U.S. dollar weakened? Now remember, I've been telling you U.S. dollar to weaken for a while. And now I'm starting to hear talking heads. They're, they're scratching their heads. They're like, the Fed's raising interest rates and uh, the dollar's weak. It's funny, right? I think it's fun. Uh, well, okay, Ryan says yen strength coming soon. I need to be prepared for that. But there wasn't a lot of yen weakness to begin with, right? So I'm like, I'm, I wonder. So I'm not going to be black and white, but I will be ready. And I will do it. I just may not like it. I might not believe it. Right? I might sell it, make money, and say, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> but at least I know. At least I know. Um because that, you know, to put it in contrast, in other years, I'm just like, boom, right? Remember a year ago, I'm like, this thing's going to drop. I know it's going to drop. It's, boom, it might be today, it might be next week, but it's dropping. I'm going to sell it. It's going to go to the third week of January. Then there's going to be a false rally. Then I'm going to sell the hell out of that. And I'm like, I'm confident as can be, right? Remember that? Ex almost exactly one year ago? I think it was the 12th of December last year. I'm not that confident this year because there's nothing to sell off. Right? So uh, I, I, I got to be cautious. All right. So I wanted you guys to think out of the box a little bit. What exotic currencies carry high yields that we could benefit from uh, the long run growth in macroeconomics? Let's try and how I'm supposed to say it. Turkish lira. So uh, this is, we'll leave that there. I don't want to mess that up. So we'll move, we'll change gold. Let's go. 
is the Turkish lira. I get this to an hourly. Cool. Check that out. I sold the USD, or I bought the Turkish lira right at the weekly. <laughs> but why? 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 How about that, bro? What if this is a long term top? No, I sold, well, I bought the Lira, which means I sold this. So, I'm not saying this is good. I'm just saying, I'm trying to show you that uh, I'm open-minded. I'm thinking long-term. I'm looking at long-term charts. I'm challenging myself. I'm thinking... If global macroeconomics has improved, let's say GDP, we should start to draw down inventories, inventories of everything we've built up when demand was low. So as demand increases, let's say we try to draw down inventories for oil. But what if we draw down inventories for iron ore and coal and all that kind of stuff? Well, then you'll see commodity currencies start to improve, but also what about um, emerging markets and stuff? You know, um, they, they've gone through tough times as the more developed economies crashed. Well, now that the uh, developed economies are recovering, who's next in line to benefit? Who's going to benefit most by increased demand, increase in risk appetite? You know what I mean? So I'm not suggesting anything except think about, think, think, just think. So maybe I tiptoe, maybe I don't. Oops. Okay. Do you see this double top, lower low, lower high scenario? That made me think. Because that's, uh, this is the right shoulder of the multi-year double top. So this is a retracement, and then this might be that, right? Could be. Now, if there are bulls, they need to buy right now. Okay, that's my risk right here. If there are bulls, they're going to buy here, and their stops are here, right? Oops. So anyways... You can keep your eye on it, have some fun. So peso and lira, nice. Okay, so we'll see. You have to be careful, Kenny. So I'm saying li I'm buying lira, which means I'm selling 
USD Lira. If I say I'm buying peso, that means I'm selling USD Mexican peso. Okay. So in this case, I'm short and making money on the peso, and I'm short and making money on the USD Turkish Lira. So I'm buying Lira, buy. So I'm buying the exotics. Okay, well, we're, we're both just trying to clarify and communicate effectively, right? So that's all. Cool. Just challenging you to think outside the box, maybe. Uh, you know, especially if you're not doing the easy stuff, right? Because you might not be doing things like the first day of the week, Monday. For me, it's Sunday night. The market opens, you're at a weekly M2. I mean, you're supposed to buy that. Right? So, like, if you're not doing that, well, then we have to talk about something else, right? Uh, that's just straight up out of the swing trading boards. So, you know, like this one, too. Sunday afternoon, I open up my charts. The market opens, right? And we're right here. This is a monthly M2, weekly M2 pivot cluster off of support that we identified uh, at non farm payrolls, right? Um, if you didn't buy that, I mean, like, what do you, what, it, I guess we have to talk about the Gisalera, right? You're not, you're not swing trading. Yeah, but it's your job. Like, what did you do Sunday night? Oh, I was watching football. All right, well, football players are getting filthy, stinking rich, and you're not. You're supposed to be swing trading that type of day, not watching Sunday night football. So I don't know, right? It's just like you're supposed to be swing trading that time of day, right? Yeah, running in tights. Nice. Right, so like, so there's the easy stuff. Yeah, well, in at the same price, it's more like, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. But this is still a follow-on from the other move here, from the one, two, three, double bottom, one, two, three, right? And then, so now you got to look at it uh with this in mind okay that's the next level of resistance let me pull this down a little bit okay and it's also a zone for bears so we're kind of in a take profit area already but i have two trades open at break even so so yeah i have to decide Side, do I take the money on or you know, I don't know. So it depends. I mean, I've already bagged a hundred pips for the day. Um so do I sit on it? Uh, you know, I haven't even made the decision. I mean it just doesn't look like it's gonna go any good. It certainly couldn't go any further than that. So I guess I just kinda like see how New York opens. Yeah, it's definitely not trending, right? Um, it has the opportunity to move um, last week. It was supposed to do this. It didn't, so I have to assume it's ranging. Okay? Does that make sense? And I'm just... I, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just an attitude thing. I, I'm, I'm worried that people are already bailing out of the market and that just this fizzles out 20 pips away from target, right? Um, but I don't want to think that way. And then I start thinking like, well, you know, it's too early to bail out of work off before the Christmas, right? So, you know, the, we got to get to GDP on Thursday, I think it is, and then I think people are going to bail on Friday. 
So, yeah, I'm going to try to let it run. I'm going to try to be strong, the, the whole patience and discipline thing. Um, but I have, I, I think I'd be lucky to get it up to that point. And at this point, I just don't think it's going to break. But the, the, the pattern is M2, M4, right? So, you know, in a way, I just did what I'm supposed to do, right? It's just my job. Like, Sunday night, if you're at the M2, you're supposed to buy. So I did. And I'm making money. But that's what's supposed to happen, right? So it's like, what? Are, yeah. So anyone that's taken the swing trading course, should, there are multiple, there, there isn't many, but there are a few trades that set up perfectly for you. Uh, uh, so I will go over to the ends. Okay, that's the CAD yen that I got kicked out of. I don't remember where it got knocked out, but I'm out. So I don't even want to look at it now. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's Euro Yen. I bought this last night. Uh, it opened right here at the weekly M2. So I bought it. My stops at break even. I'm making money. Uh, this is where it should. Uh, I'm just. I'm, I'm hoping something like this. Okay. So you kind of have to look left here and say, well, this this whole area should be support. Okay. So there's another swing trade. You know, it's it's sort of the same trade as my euro dollar long. So I don't feel comfortable on my exposure. So now I'm long euro, but I didn't mean to be. I'm more like short dollar, short yen. So I feel overcrowded uh, on the euro. But again, I'm just doing my job. I mean, look at the support. Oops. Right? Look at the support, yo. <laughs> it's it's weak too. It's like how, how, I, I, I'm like I have to buy it, right? Aren't I obligated as a swing trader? Like I have to buy it, even if I don't like it. I'm like, golly gee whiz, Batman! Golly! <laughs> right. See you, Jorge. So, uh, yeah, I don't feel good about that, but that's that. Um, here's pound yen. I missed this one. Where did it go? I think I missed it. Let's look. It's a working order. Yeah, it's still a buy. Look at this buy limit, guys. See? Buy limit. <laughs> what? What? I missed the spread. What? Oh, they, I missed it by the spread, you scumbag. Shoot. So what happened is it opened at the M2, but I, I didn't see it till it was up here. So I dropped it in case it double bottomed, which it did on a smaller time frame. It would have double bottomed. Let's do it that way. And uh, <laughs> what you scumbag! But anyways, look at that beautiful, beautiful open, just a great, beautiful open for swing traders. That sucks. So I'm gonna kill that anyways. Happens. It happens, a eh, brew. Uh, Cad, no, I didn't. I'm not on. Just again. What's going on here? Uh, 
Yeah, I got to decide what to do here. This is, I mean, it's not trending up anymore, right? So do I buy? Do I buy it at this M2? I got serious doubts. And if you're a bear, golly gee whiz, that, that's a pretty decent sell, isn't it? If you're already bearish, I'm sort of neutral. I want the yen to weaken. I want the dollar to weaken. So I'm going to pass, if you don't mind. I'm going to pass on this. I'd be fighting against myself, and I don't want that. Uh, Kiwi. Kiwi, I'm up. Uh, I'm up uh, 183 pips. So I'm going to sit on that for a little bit. Yeah, we already talked about this last week, so it's just kind of playing out. I'm a bit nervous about it. So I, I need to see how this week opens. I don't want to get all gobbledygook, but um, that bothers me. So I need to see how this week, how New York opens. I don't want to watch it come all the way back and break even, right? So, yo, right. so uh, yeah, I just, I got to see how the week opens. I, I don't have answers yet. I, I'm fine. I mean, what should I do? Lock in 100 pips? I guess I can do that. Uh, so I'm in at 77. So I'll move it up to 78. All right, so worst case scenario now is I make 100 pips, just like it did on uh, CAD Yen. Oops. Yo skin. So now I'm hoping for this, and I, it feels a lot like hope, doesn't it? More than logic. So yeah, I need to see how the market. It's almost like sentiment. I want to see how the market trades the beginning of the week. If it stays risk on, great. But at some point, I do expect some risk off, like I was talking about earlier in the session, some profit taking and some loss taking, but. Um, but it might be towards like after GDP on Thursday. So we'll see. I just we'll see how how we move. Does that make sense? Uh, Aussie yen. Uh, it's moving along. I don't think it's as good as the Kiwi, but I'm up uh, 120 pips. So we'll see. I'm looking left. This should act as support, right? But I think it'll come more like that, but it's already played that out. So uh, oh, I bought another one in here. Why did I do that? Cleans up. Huh. What the hell? I bought why did I buy it down here? I don't remember now. Why did I buy it last week? I must have Gee whiz, I don't know why I bought it a second time. I don't recall at all. I have no idea why I bought that. Was it a trade plan on Friday? 
check my four hour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's still. Yeah, it's. Yeah, see, I should be in down here. I should have traded it on the open. I didn't, though. Look at that, right at the open. Just gorgeous. Uh, yeah, I'm my, I, I need to, I, I'm relying now on the four hour 21 to hold this up. But I'm even sitting on it. Um, I think I'm going to bust out a break even, but I might buy it back later, maybe even at the same price. I should be in lower, is the problem. And yeah. Yeah, I get the role reversal thing. I get that. It's just still high. Like, what you want to see is a retracement to the sweet spot, right? So, really, even just that would be more ideal, right? Buy it off the weeklies and stuff. Uh, I feel like I'm out of position. So, when it opens high as a bull, you don't have a pivot trade. But you have a, a trade off the 21. So that's why I was saying, like, my only hope is off the 21. But I don't want to drop my stop, like, I mean, I don't want to give any of this 120 pips away, right? So I don't want to, like, if I had a 60 pip stop on this, well, then I lose 60 pips on the first one if I get stopped out. But I gave up 60 pips on the, on the other trade, too. So it's like... So I, I'm risk averse. What can I say? I, I, I see there's a little bit of potential here. I see there's a little bit of risk here. Uh, I'm in. I got my stop at a break even on both of these positions. I don't want to lose money. I don't want to risk any money. Kind of like sitting here with no risk. So uh, I guess there's nothing left to do but pray. Uh, and if it comes down lower and then turns north, maybe I buy it. Um, I mean, there's room for this to run, just how much risk I want to take. But can you see what I've done, though? I'm long Aussie, I'm long Kiwi, I'm long Lira, I'm long Peso. Short dollar, short yen. Yeah, I, I should probably be short Swiss franc. You see what I'm doing? It's all risk on. But every single trade is locked in at break even. What is this? Okay. Wow, I'm on Euro Swissy. What the heck? I don't remember doing that one either. I don't like the pivot, so I'm going to lock that in at break even. I'm going to check. Oops. So I'm up 420 pips, roughly. Uh, hmm. I'm not getting enough sleep. I don't remember buying the Euro Swissy. I don't even see why. Yeah, so I'm just I'm logging in and taking risk off the table. <laughs> that's my job. Take the risk off the table. So all my trades are at break even. So that's a good day. That's a victory. Uh, we did oil before. It doesn't look like it's moving yet. So. It looks stuck in the mud, so that's why I'm staying away from CAD. So I'm up 400 pips for, 
uh, in floating profit. I've already taken 100 pips profit on CAD yen. So kind of done for now. Uh, I just I want to get a feel for the New York Open before I start adding more positions. But I could take profit right now and have 500 pips for the week and be done. But I want more! Uh, it's yeah, it, it's been a tough year, man. Not not a tough year. It's been uh, it's been how would you describe it? Um, simple, not in a good way, right? No, I'm not going to look at Euro Noki. Sorry. Um. Yeah, no, I just, no, I don't want to. It's probably awesome. It's probably awesome. I, I, yeah, I already did Lira Peso today, bro. Uh, yeah, not that Noki's exotic. I mean, but it's another oil trade. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not playing CAD, so why would I play Noki, right? If I, if I had, like, CAD yen, CAD dollar longs, and I wanted a yet another oil exposure, then I'd go Noki, right? But no, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm not, I'm not in CAD because oil ain't moving anymore. Um, and we have to remind ourselves, you know, when when we're at, like, I think we're at 45. Wasn't the plan for it to come down to 40 and then move up to 50, 55? You know, and, and that's it, right? And and oils is stalled out right at that higher end. So uh, I don't know what more to do at the moment on that. Yeah. So we need, uh, you know, we're we're getting pretty close to the end of the year. Most of the cold weather, you know, and then inventories generally start building up again. So I'm thinking, yeah, uh, I might end up selling oil for a while. Right, I might, I, I, haven't, I haven't made a decision yet. Uh, uh, I'm based on supply. I might do a supply side sell. But the problem is, I believe demand is increasing. So now we have to look at the rate of change of demand versus the rate of change of supply, find out which one's moving. Right? Is supply increasing faster than demand? So it's getting a little bit complicated, right? And you know, <clears throat> sixty bucks is sort of like the fracking line in the sand. And um, we know uh, Kuwait's going to start um, increasing supply. The Russians are going to cheat. The Venezuelans are going to cheat. So OPEC's losing its grip. So and then typically between January and June, we build inventories. So. Do we build inventories beyond last year? No, but I still think we, there's a big potential, especially when we're talking more like February, we should probably start to see an increase in, in, um, in supply, and that could bring price down. Right? Does that make sense? And then I'll start buying it back probably May, June, July. Just so that's the thought process. That's called strategy or bias. And from that, I would use technical analysis to confirm or den confirm or deny the hypothesis. Looks like my euro is going to move, which is good. I'm overexposed to euro. Nice. All right, well, peace on earth.
May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Will I see you tomorrow? Hey, Daniel, you know, since I got back from Singapore, every single day I've made myself soup, noodle soup. <laughs> I went to the store and I got, I got just so much supply. I just bought like, like months worth of supplies to make my own soup. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, the, the, the exam is released this evening, but I have a 24-hour window since I, I elected to take it online. So I'll end up doing it tomorrow after our webinar. So. Yeah, well, not the not just ramen, though. Um, uh, uh, sobe and soba noodles. and, and I, I think I have five different types of noodles. But then... Um, Right, but I'm also looking at uh, sort of pre-packaged like stir-fry type vegetables, and then I bought uh, chicken stock, beef, uh, uh, beef stock. I even bought uh, seafood stock, <laughs> uh, uh, lemongrass and ginger and garlic, and uh, and then you can get these like. Uh, pre-organized packs of chicken and beef so literally I could just I'm making soup and in my stir fry let's say I start with some onion and some bell peppers and some other veggies I get that going in some hot oil then I throw in some protein just grab a handful of pre-cooked let's say chicken they're really nice grill marks on them and everything and then stir fry that around and then I throw in the, uh, the stock get that all boiling, throw in some noodles, get all that going, joop, 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 joop. And like literally five minutes later, I have this big bowl of soup. And when I'm done, joop, 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 clean the wok, done. I mean, it's great. But I love my, I love my soup. Yeah, green curry, yeah, sounds good. Tong yum paste. That's interesting. I didn't even know. Make some fun too. Yeah. Nice. I have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I just didn't know they had paste. That's interesting. Cool. See? Thank you for sharing. At least I didn't get back and just drink Singapore slings for a week. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for being on my team. I appreciate you. I look forward to hanging out with you every day. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Cheers.